Hello, folks. Welcome back to Rugby Ascent. This is Chris live in central Pennsylvania. Apologies for the late start, but technical difficulties owing to Microsoft resetting my computer. I had to reset my printer and everything else. The Flower of Scotland just playing back. Getting ready for the call of Ireland. Let me give you the lineups here for the home side for Ireland. It's Hugo Keenan, Calvin Nash, Robbie Henshaw, Bundy Aki, James Lowe, Jack Crowley, Jameson Gibson Park, Kalen Doris, Josh Van Der Fleer, Peter Omani, Tag Byrne, the captain, Joe McCarthy, Tag Furlong, Dan Sheehan, and Andrew Porter. So that's the starting lineup. Off the bench, Ronan Kelleher, Keen Healy, Finley Bielam, Ryan Baird, Jack Conan, Connor Murray, Harry Byrne, and Gary Ringrose for Ireland. Final Six Nations match this season for these two sides. And Ireland on the verge of a back-to-back -back Six Nations championship. For Scotland, Blair Kinghorn at fullback. Kyle Sten, the South African Hugh Jones. Stafford McDowell, surprise starter there. Duan Fondameva on that left wing. Finn Russell is the co-captain. Ben White, Jack Dempsey, Rory Darge, Andy Christie, Scott Cummings. Grant Gilchrist are your locks. Xander Fagerson, George Turner, and the South African Pierre Schumann in that front row. Ewan Ashman, Roy Sutherland, Elliot Miller, Mills, Sam Skinner. Uh, now they're playing the call of Ireland. Here we go. There you go. You got it? All right. Microsoft reset my settings on that or something. Uh, it, I don't know. It was on when I started. You got it now? You guys got the sound now? Give me, a, give me a thumbs up if you got sound now. I can see it. It's telling me it's here. Okay, five by five. Thanks for the heads up. Sorry for that, guys. Anyway, um, so this game is kind of anticlimactic. Scotland screwed the chance last week to win this whole thing. And Ireland screwed their chance to win the back-to-back -back Grand Slam and Six Nations for the first time in the history of the tournament. However, we are ready to get started in what should be a cracker of a game here. Who are you picking, Ireland or Scotland today? Let's get a poll out real quick here. Who wins today, Ireland or Scotland? Matthew Carley is official on the pitch. Scotland will kick to Ireland to get us underway here. And we're underway in Dublin. Everybody's Irish today. All right, except Scotland, of course. 
So Ireland goes into a ruck, and Jamison Gibson Park will dig it out of the back. Kicks it high and see there from deep inside his 22. That ball is going to find, not going to find touch. Taken over there by Finn Russell. Bounces on the turf. Kinghorn has it now. Midfield, there's space on the outside. Come on. Do I find him ever? Come on, get rid of the ball. He tries to fight off a tackle when he had someone on the wing. Bad decision there. A penalty for not releasing the ball on top of it. A bad start for Scotland here. As Duan Fondamever missed a golden opportunity to find a man on the outside. Dan Sheehan with a big tackle. The pitch must be wet. It looks like mud on Sheehan's arm after going to the ground. Must be wet there. So, here we go. Wow. So, Ireland now kicking the ball down the pitch. Jack Crowley. Looking for some territory here. It'll be a line out down around the 22 after that penalty against Duhan Fondameva. Fondameva, instead of looking for help, which he had, went to ground with it and then did not release it. Actually, that's a nonsense call. He did release the ball. He placed it on the ground. There were hands in the ruck. I disagree with that call watching it on the replay. All right, so Dan Sheehan will throw it in for Ireland's first line out at the 22 of Scotland. Six, oh, it bounces away. Knocked backwards by Ireland. Finally picked up. And here comes Bundy Aki with the ball. Carrying it forward. <clears throat> He's tackled. Gibson Park digs it out. Andrew Porter now trying to go forward with the ball. Ireland just outside the 22 of Scotland. Ball knocked on by Ireland. And Finn Russell kicks it down the pitch. Gives up the knock on advantage. And it'll be collected down there. So the advantage is over. Here comes Ireland looking to go wide. Tackle missed there, but held on to. Well done there by Hugh Jones. So Scotland drives them back inside their own 10-meter line now. Ireland going through phases. Gibson Park to dig it out. Call to use it. Gibson Park with a box kick over the top. It's going to go out to about midfield. Kinghorn goes up. Nice job on the high ball. He gets it, but it tackled immediately by Peter Omani, the captain. Scotland trying to go through the middle now. Andy Christie over there to form a ruck. Ben White to dig this out for Scotland. It's inside the 50, so this could be a 50-22, but it's box kick. Man, the crowd is going wild. Ireland chanting. Knocked up in the air, and it goes backwards. This is a knock-on advantage for, that went forward off of Scotland hand. Gibson Park with the ball now. Hands it off to Scott Cummings, who dry, no, excuse me, Cummings. <laughs> Tag Burn. Tag Burn, the Irish captain. It's not Omani today, it's Tag Burn. Gibson Park being told to use it. He kicks it over the top. Box kick over midfield. Going to come down around the 10-meter line. Kinghorn. Is it Kinghorn? He goes up high for it. Nicely done by Kinghorn. Scotland doing a good job on the high ball so far. But Ireland's there immediately. And now they're sideways in at the ruck is Josh Van der Fleer. He's cautioned. And Skumon, Pierre Skumon with his first carry of the game. Gets about a half a meter. Ruck is formed. Ben White to dig it out for Scotland here. No score. Three minutes, 40 seconds into the contest, folks. Head says Ireland. The heart says Scotland, says Esbach. The beards say the referees. <laughs> well said, Esbach. Ireland gets the ball on the re on the kick. Gibson Park digs it out, sends it to Sheehan. He's tackled immediately. Andy Christie in there. Good performance for Christie early in this game. Gibson Park. Scotland on defense, doing a good job at this stage so far. Ireland's not had an answer thus far, but Scotland really hasn't any ball possession. Here's a clearance kick. Oh, it's chased down by Christie. Oh, damn. Oh, Christie chased it down, but it just went in a touch about two meters out. It'll be a five-meter line out for Ireland. James Lowe's kick is chased down by Christie, and it just bounces in a touch. It could have been a try. Heartbreaker for Scotland there. What a great chance that was. Andy Christie with a brilliant chase down of that kick of James Lowe. Dangerous kick by James Lowe, but Ireland now with their ball at the five-meter line. Scotland needs good defense here. Sheehan throws it in, and it's not straight. Oh, they switch receiver. So it's going to be a turnover to Scotland. And they just tap and go. Scotland now within five meters. But the ball is stolen by Ireland. Oh, sloppy ball handling. Ireland's up over the 22. What looked to be glory for Scotland turns into disappointment instantaneously here. My goodness. 
Kicked down the pitch all the way back to outside the 22. Blair Kinghorn now charging up. He gets the midfield untouched over midfield. He's taken down there by Tag Burn. Wow, Scotland was within two meters and sloppy ball handling stolen by Ireland. Changes the narrative here. Man, oh man, what an exciting game thus far. Finn Russell does two dummies, finally hoists the ball. It'll go inside the 22, taken by James Lowe, who will take the mark. Wow. Man, oh man, oh man. This is something else, isn't it? This is something else. So Ireland kicks it down the pitch. They're going to find touch here. McCarthy stole that ball. That steal was by McCarthy from Ireland a few minutes ago. Boy. So Scotland line out now. Successful to Christie. From midfield. George Turner tackle now. Ruck form. Ben White will dig it out as the team gets lined up to the left. Over to, is it Christie again? I can't see. Scotland wearing their dark blue jerseys. Ireland wearing their green. I'm not wearing either jersey. I'm wearing a mix with a Welsh jersey or blue and green on it. James Lowe comes down with that ball. Nicely done. Scurries up, and he's going to get called for crawling on the ground. Yep. This is a kickable penalty. Will Scotland go for the post here? Yeah, I think they mark going straight for the post. James Lowe crawled across the turf. Bad decision on his part. Good job on the high ball, but then he's tackled by, by Kyle Stan. But then he, he starts crawling on the ground. So will Scotland go for the post? Lowe is like, ah, bit of a mistake on my part there. Seven minutes in. Look and see what's going on. I think we're going to go for the kick. Yep, here we go. Lining it up. Scotland trying to draw first blood. Looks like it sold out of Eva Stadium, folks. Finn Russell, his first kick of the game from 45 meters. Super Bowl's looking pretty good, Matthew. Well, good for you. Mine isn't. <laughs> I don't think it's looking good. I'll have to take a look and see. So Finn Russell now with a sold out of Eva Stadium, folks. 28 seconds remain on the shot clock. 7.45 in the contest. That kick's going to go right down... Hollywood and Vine straight through the post and Scotland draws first blood. Scotland draws first blood. There we go. 3 0. Eight minutes now. Crowd is really into this game, folks. Beautiful Viva Stadium in Dublin, where the River Liffey is located. Well, Dublin's located where River Liffey is, I should say. Here's the kick by Jack Crowley. The restart. It's going to be short on the near side. Knocked backwards by Ireland, and they've secured possession. Wow. Scotland cannot get the ball on the restart. Jameson Gibson Park trying to get the ball out. It's available. Matthew Carley not falling for it. Buniaki with a carry. But Scotland's defense has been up to the task thus far. Crowley kicks it through. It's going to bounce inside the 22 and push Scotland back deep. About a 27-meter gain there from that kick from Crowley as it bounced into touch. So I'll give a line out to Scotland deep in their own territory here with nine minutes and five seconds off the clock. Jack Crowley really growing into his game here. Scotland line out from about 8, 17, 16, 17 meters away from their own try line. George Turner to throw this ball in. He does. Successful. They bring it back. Ben White to Finn Russell. Clearance kick from Russell. That's a beautiful kick. All the way past midfield. Caught by James Lowe. Just past midfield. He comes over midfield. Here come the defenders up inside the 10 meter line. Goes James Lowe. He's tackled there by Xander Fagerson. Ruck is formed. Gibson Park goes over into the center. Into the hands of Tag Burn, the captain. Pick it out, go right. Bundy Aki. Aki looking for space. Almost gets through. Scotland adjust. Gibson Park to Porter. Porter. Andrew Porter now tackled. Josh Von der Fleer trying to push tacklers off. Cole Crowley got hit without the ball. James Lowe kicks it forward. And it finds touch. But man, Jack Crowley took a heck of a shot there from Finn Russell, it looked like. Tough shot there. 
and he had already long offloaded that ball. Could have been a penalty. Let's see if we see this again. Yeah, that was that was a brutal hit. It wasn't it wasn't uh, Finn Russell? It's actually Rory Darge who hit him. Took a big hit. Okay, so it'll be a Scotland line out again, but they're further back this time, about seven meters away from their line. Living dangerously, Christie comes down with it. They go into a mall this time. The back of the mall is Turner. And this is a weird-looking mall as they go forward. Matthew Carley coming over, giving advice. And Ben Young, or Ben Ben White, kicks it down the pitch. And a seagull flies across. It looked like the rugby ball. Up oh, there's a ball. Crowley is taken down. Scotland adjusts. Ireland now. Going wide. Oh, Hedgehog breaks through, but he's tackled. Never let go of him. Gibson Park back to low. Low does the dummy to Josh von der Fleer. And now we have an advantage for offside, I believe, against Scotland. Chance for Ireland to tie it up or get more. Porter driving to the 22. He's taken down by Grant Gilchrist. Gibson Park goes wide to James Lowe. He kicks it forward, but it goes into touch. There was an advantage offside against Scotland. We're going to come back at 11-15 in the contest. Chance for Ireland to pick up some points here. Are they going to go for the post or the corner? Ireland is going for the corner. Crowley doesn't even hesitate. Corner kick. Here they go. And a crowd. Very happy about that. Crowd very happy about that, folks. All right. It's going to be an Irish line out deep in Scotland's territory now. A chance to turn the tables on Scotland. We've had played pretty well here. A couple mistakes early, but Ireland now on home turf. Aviva Stadium. I wonder if it was just paint that was on that pitch because it doesn't look wet from anyone else's uniform. That one I mentioned earlier with Dan Sheehan, his arm was covered. Must have been just wet paint. Line out from six meters, Ireland on the far side of the pitch. Nice overhead camera view here I've got. Successful. And they go to short side. Oh, Sheehan now, but driven into touch. Into touch, Scotland. Great defense there. They drive Ireland into touch. Sheehan can't quite get in there. Was there a penalty? No, it's a Scotland line out from the five meter line. They need this one. They go deep and it overthrow it right to Sheehan and it's a try for Ireland. Oh my gosh. What an incredible cock up. What the heck was that? Ireland overthrows it and Dan Sheehan intercepts it and goes in untouched for the try. What the, this is, this is like a fixed game, my goodness. How do you screw up that badly? Dan Sheehan with his 10th try in 26 caps. How does that happen at this level of a rugby? Right to Sheehan, he dives across for the try. How does that happen? Oh my goodness. Grant Gilchrist couldn't get his hands on it. What a mistake. And White went to tackle and just moved his arm away. What kind of tackle is that? Andy Farrell's like, wow, we'll take that. What a cock up. What an unbelievable cock up. Man, oh man, oh man. Wow, Sheehan with the try there. Dan Sheehan with the first try of the game on a Scotland huge mistake. So here's a kick from the far side by Jack Crowley. Crowd gets quiet, respecting the kicker. And that kick is going to go through, and it's 7-3. to three. Seven three, Ireland. Uh, S box says Ireland without Sexton's like a. Here's the restart, like a lion without Braveheart. I think Ireland without Sexton's a team that's a lot more enjoyable to watch. <laughs> no belly aching. Jameson Gibson Park comes to the near side. Gibson Park, digging out of a ruck. You know, the turf doesn't look wet. Well, that was nearly charged down. Did he touch it? Didn't go anywhere. As it stands, Ireland would finish with 20 points. Scotland with 12. England with 12. France with 11. But England and France yet to play yet. This score would guarantee a back-to-back -back Six Nations title for Ireland. And they win in home soil. 
Line out by Scotland. Gilchrist brings it out. Okay, Scotland's got something cooking here. They're going to go wide. Oh, Kyle Sten is tackled over there. But Ben White to Finn Russell. Oh, nice job by Kinghorn. He spun around with a loose ball and held on to it. That ball stripped. Went backwards. Scotland still has it. Matthew Carley said the ball went backwards, but Scotland lost all their momentum there. Finn Russell. Matthew... Or Matthew... <laughs> Zander Fagerson. Finn Russell now. Skumon. Scotland trying to find their way through there. Ben White digs it out. Goes back to the middle now. Jack Dempsey with a carry. Offside. That's an easy penalty for, for Scotland here. Christie now on the far side. They've got a penalty right in front of the post. Ben White to Skumon. Josh van der Fleer, South African on South African for the tackle. We come back to the middle. Here comes Finn Russell to the near side. Hey, out here on the wing. Hugh Jones drives inside the 22. Scotland still with a long advantage here. They go back to the middle. Rory Darge, Crowley offsides. Duhan find him ever taken down by Bundiaki. We're going to come back for the advantage. Will they take the three points right in front of the post? I mean, these, these are a gift. I think you got to take these. I think you got to take these points. Never retreated offside. We're going for the post. Yep. Finn Russell. So yeah, this is right in front of the post. Bundiaki with a textbook tackle. A textbook tackle on Kyle Sten. He goes down around the thighs, grabs him, and takes him down. Boy, Klinghorn did a or Kinghorn did a great job earlier on that catch he had. Bundiaki doing a great job here. Another nice tackle on Duhan. Find him ever watching it. He is a stud, Bundiaki. Right straight down the middle now for Finn Russell. Chance to negate that try that Dan Sheehan just got on a Scotland mistake. Right down the middle, and it's 7-6. to six. Keeping that scoreboard turning over here in the first half. Ireland now needs Scotland 7-6. 17-40 in the contest. Let's take a look at Super Brew. I'll bring that up while we wait for the restart. <clears throat> Waiting for the kick here. So 7-6. to six. Let me see what I have for results here. I had Italy by 6. They won by 3. So I get 2 points. I have Ireland by 7. Here's the restart. And it's taken inside the 22 by Scotland. Ruck is formed there. Ireland did a great job getting down there. Got a hand in there by Porter grabbing the scrum half. No penalty called on that. It's a sloppy looking Ruck here. As... Cummings gets in position. Call to use it already. White kicks that ball high into the air. Short of midfield. It's going to be taken there by Jack Crowley. He charges right into George Turner. Oh, tag burn tackle there. Gibson Park digs it out. Crowley brings it to the near side to come wide. Oh, Bundiaki carrying down to the 22. Nice carry by Bundiaki. He places the ball low. Crowley now. Ireland now. Got a little something cooking here. Tag burn with a carry now. Tackled outside the 22. Scotland adjust. Gibson Park to Crowley again. Crowley back to the inside to Peter Omani. Omani is tackled. Gilchrist with a carry now. All the Irish players getting involved. Gibson Park digs it out. This time, Joe McCarthy with a carry. We haven't hauled him in a while. Inside the 22 at the center of the pitch. They're going to go wide. Fake dummy kick there. Tackle made. Gibson Park goes to Crowley again. He kicks it forward. Ball is going to be into touch. Not touched by Kinghorn. So it bounces through the 20, through the the uh, try zone, what's the call going to be here? I don't think Keyword ever touched it. Let's see. <clears throat> Calvin Nash with a great pass there to, to Bundiaki. Took three Scotland players to bring him down. Oh, man. Some great play here by both sides early on. Some really good ball movement, great handling. Some textbook tackling, too. <clears throat> 
So let's see what we got going on here. Kinghorn did a good job letting that ball bounce into touch. One o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Porter's getting some treatment here, stretching his arm. Andrew Porter, he's had four carries for 13 meters. Made three tackles already. Yeah, so good start to the Six Nations for me. Upcoming games, I've got Major League Rugby this weekend. we got six games on tap. New England hosts New Orleans. Oak Glory hosts Chicago. I would normally go to that, except I'm busy campaigning today. Yep. And France hosting England. Houston hosting, oh, I got that already. And then uh, Houston hosting Miami. Utah hosting Seattle. San Diego hosting LA. All right, so we got an HIA. That's what it is. We got a clock stopped at 1947 for head injury assessment. Okay, he's good to go. Scott Cummings had HIA on the field. No, he's fine. All right, so he's good. We're going to continue the game. Clock was stopped. Scott Cummings being seen to by the physio over there, the medic. And now we're going to continue the contest. <clears throat> Scotland, free kick from the 22, goes over midfield, taken over there by Crowley. Getting a lot of work Crowley is today. And into the hands of Jack Dempsey. Excuse me, Jack Dempsey, not Dempsey. <laughs> Kaylin Doris. Bundy Aki now. Rock form. Gibson Park digs it out. And Dan Sheehan is taken down. What a big hit there. Scotland's onside. It's stolen by Scotland in midfield. Finn Russell kicks it forward. Bounces inside the 22. It's going to sit down and just go into the try zone. But it's not going to go out. Just a little too much by Finn Russell. Good idea, but just scooted into the try zone. Wow. What is the crowd cheering for now? <clears throat> so goal line kick. Crowley will kick the drop, goal line drop kick. So Scott and I have a chance to do a little counterattacking here. Guinness 0.0. .0. What is Guinness 0.0? .0? Is it the original recipe or something? Something new? At the 10-meter line, Finn Russell hands that ball off to Jack Dempsey. Dempsey drives forward. Ben White back to the middle. Scotland working hard here. Trailing by one point, 21 minutes into the contest. The ball goes towards the center of the pitch. Rock form again. Ben White to Christie. Christie to Finn Russell. Finn Russell goes wide. And Stafford McDowell, whose number we haven't called, Ball's available. Ben White brings it out. Driving forward is Grant Gilchrist. Goes White goes in outside again. This time into the hands of Rory Darge, co-captain. And picked up by Duan Fondamover. Dances around two players. Gets away from tackle. Gets up again. But he's lost three or four meters. And now not releasing the ball. Going to be a penalty against Scotland. He reversed the signal. He signaled it was against uh, Ireland, but it was against Scotland because... Do you want to find him ever did not release the ball? Again, that's the second penalty on him. Let's see who. Do you want to find him ever is trying to do it all himself, and he's not getting it done. Tag Furlong won the penalty, so Ireland wins a penalty there. Kick down the pitch. That's going to be a line out outside, well outside the 22. And Fondam ever shaking his head like, I didn't hold on to it. Brother, you held on to that ball all day long. Don't kid yourself. 31 meters gained on that kick. 39 people currently here. Be sure to hit the like button, folks. Robert Wood, how's it going? Andre White. Okay, good to see you there. Sue Walsh. Who was the head of Sue? There's uh, Emil Losper. Welcome, Emil. And Sheehan throws it in. Gibson Park now with the ball. Here come the Irish. Bundy Aki driving forward. Kalen Doris there with him. Josh Vandefleer there with him. Ball available. Gibson Park does the dummy, then offloads the ball into the hands of... Who is that? I can't see who that was. Crowley now out wide again. Comes back to the middle to Sheehan, who's doing a lot of hard work as Ireland tries to get back to the 22. Gibson Park. Crowley. Calvin Nash out here to James Lowe, but Lowe is met by three Scotland players and tackled pretty quickly. Ruck is formed. One of the Scotland players look injured. Here's a kick over the top, and it goes through the try zone. Crowley, not a good idea. It's going to come all the way back. 
Jack Crowley didn't quite get the angle. He's trying to kick it for that coffin corner, kind of like the National Football League, and pinned Scotland back to a five-meter lineout, which led to a try for Ireland last time. Unfortunately for him, it bounced through the try zone. Matthew Carley having a conversation with Finn Russell. Carley got a big smile on his face, not sure why. 24 minutes in the contest now, folks. So Carly and Russell still talking. Finn Russell now with a free kick. It bounces on the other side of the midfield. Here comes Kalen Doris charging up the midfield where he's met and tackled there by Pierre Skuman. We go back to the center. Tackle made there on Dan Sheehan. So Gibson Park goes over the top. The chase is on. And taken out in the air is a Scotland player. Are we going to say fair contest? I guess it was a fair contest. Looked like the player was taken out in the air without a realistic chance. I thought that might have been a penalty at least. Nothing doing. James Lowe now with the ball for Scotland over midfield. He's met and tackled. Gibson Park brings the ball at the Porter. Porter comes to Crowley. Crowley comes to the near side. All the way out to the wing. Into the hands of Robbie Henshaw. Henshaw tackled. Kalen Doris now. Gibson Park almost fell there. Digs it out, comes to the near side, into the hands of Robbie Henshaw again. He's tackled there. Henshaw places the ball. Josh Vanderford. Counter ruck coming from Scotland. Xander Fagerson. Did Scotland get it? Scotland's got it. Christie digs it out of there, but he throws it away. Finn Russell does an awkward kick, bounce it down the turf, takes the pressure off Scotland on that steal. But we got a whistle here. Offside for the kick. There was a knock on. Okay. Okay, Scotland was offside. It's a knock on in the tackle, so. Crowd's booing. They don't like that call by Matthew Carley. Clinton Crystal says, go Scotland. Robert says, howdy. Yeah, it is a close game in performance and on the scoreboard. 25 minutes, 49 seconds in the contest, ladies and gentlemen. So one try in the game, that was on a total cock-up by Scotland where they did a line-out and overthrew Gilchrist. We got one of the players being taped up for, is that Joe McCarthy being taped up for Ireland right now? He's taping himself, actually. <laughs> a little bit of a water break at 25 minutes now as the clock has stopped. 25-49, Ireland leading 7-6. to six. Well, as it stands, if it ends like this, Ireland wins consecutive Six Nations trophies. Unfortunately, they ruined their chance at winning the first ever back-to-back -back Grand Slam by losing last week to England late in the game, a game they should have won easily. England still mathematically in the race for the title, but Scotland's got to do them a big service here. So here's the scrum. Is this the first scrum of the game? 26 minutes in. I was seeing the referee cam now. Wow, look at all those people, man. Sold out. Yeah, referee cam there for Matthew Carley. Bind. Pack weights 903 to 896. Slight advantage for Scotland. Set. Slight advantage for Scotland. 903 to 896. It collapses. Are we going to reset it? With Porter, has got stains all over him, too. Plus his tattoos. Looks like his butt's tattooed, not just his leg. We're going to reset it. What a crowd, folks. Here we go. 46 here, folks. Be sure to hit the like button. We did a poll earlier, and in that poll, the majority said, a slight majority said, Ireland was going to win. 27 minutes now. Crouch. Bind. Set, says Matthew Carley. Ben White puts it in the pipe. This one holds up, digs it out, goes over to the middle. Finn Russell goes wide. Oh, there's a line break. Here comes Scotland over midfield. Down inside. The th oh, my goodness. They've got it. What a brilliant carry by McDowell. Pierre Schumann picks up about seven meters. McDowell with a huge carry there. Stafford McDowell gained a good 35 meters. Oh, that pass went astray. Cleaned up by Kyle Sten. Wow. 
Oh, man, all that momentum is gone now. What a shame. Skumon, Kinghorn. Oh, and there is McDowell again with a nice carry inside the 10-meter line. Still not back to where he was a few moments ago. Scotland now, Turner, and kicked over the top. Going to bounce inside the 22. Is it going to find touch? It does. It'll be an Ireland line out at their 17, 18-meter line. Wow. Stafford McDowell, what an incredible carry. And he, and he got around a tackle by Bundy Aki, who's been making brilliant tackles. He fought him off. He also fought one off by Crowley. And finally, they, Crowley comes back and gets him with another tackler on that play a few moments ago. What a brilliant job. That's good 35 meters he picked up on that get down to the 22. That was incredible. We're back to live action now. Line out. Sheehan to throw it in for Ireland inside their 22, 17 meters away from their own try line. <clears throat> Here's Sheehan taking all day for this line out here. There it goes up. They've got it. Gibson Park. Kaylin Doris carries it up short of the 22. Gibson Park trying to crawl it out slowly. That ball was touched by Porter, but no knock on. Gibson Park. Sounded like it was touched. Duan Fondamavers keeps it in play. Gives it to Ben White. Right on the touchline. Kinghorn now going to come wide. He's got help out here. Kyle Sten goes the other way. Cuts back inside. Ben White off the loose ball there. Picks it up. Finn Russell to Christie. Christie with a nice carry. Sheehan's there to greet him and take him down. Scotland going to the far side. Now Finn Russell pops up. That's a knock on. That's a knock on. Oh, I said forward pass. Okay, whatever. Forward pass, knock on. Whatever you want to call it. What did S-Box say? Was hoping Springboks would break Ireland's winning streak. Oh, they still will. There's still time for that. Oh, but you mean because it was... Oh, you wanted England to lose so it could be Springboks. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. That would have been cool to see South Africa win. That's another reason it was disappointing to see them lose to England last week. Yep. I would have rather seen Ireland win back-to-back -back Grand Slams, Six Nations, all of it. The whole enchilada, but they screwed the pooch, literally. All right, so we have another scrum here. It's our second of the game. Or second, or, yeah, second. 30 minutes, 26 seconds. A very low-scoring affair. We thought, we thought might be a lot more explosive. Italy held on to defeat Wales, and they have their best ever, as far as I believe, best performance in the Six Nations. Two wins, a draw, and two losses. 11 points on the log. They should have won three and only lost that one game. They could have won all four games. Can you imagine that? If they won all four games, they'd still be behind Ireland at this point. Kaylin Doris. All five games, I should say. Penalty advantage here. Okay. Pierre Schoolman whistled for a penalty there. Oh, he got himself outside the scrum. Yep, he stood up. That's what led to that penalty. So Andy Farrell, very happy up in the booth. Schumann retreating. So Ireland's Crowley will kick for some territory here. Scotland's have four penalties. Ireland just two penalties thus far in the game. Approaching halftime. That's a good, that's a good rate. Two and 30 minutes, not bad. So coming down the pitch now, Ireland taking their time for the line out. They're going to be outside the 22, about 26 meters away. So Sheehan to throw this in from the line out. Here's the toss. They go short into the hands of Peter Omani. And Josh Van der Fleer comes out there with a Gibson Park. Oh, man, crashing into the line. Taken down by Jack Dempsey. And Ireland's inside the 22 already. Gibson Park goes the other way to Josh Van der Fleer. Van der Fleer met by Christie. And Dempsey take him down. Gibson Park can't get to the ball. Penalty for knock-on, I think. Is it knock-on or penalty? Boy. Andy Christie with another great play there. So Scotland wins that. I'm not sure what the penalty was. Look, is it a knock-on or is there a penalty? So it had been a mall. That's why we get a penalty here. There had been a mall. Let's go home Ireland. What does that mean? 
27 likes. Thanks, guys. All right, we got to stop in the action here at 32 minutes, 30 seconds. Oh, excuse me. Thirty two minutes, thirty seconds in the contest. Here we go. Crouch. Bind. Set. Scotland digs it out of the back. Ben White sends it to the near side. Finn Russell is going to release this. Kicks it down to midfield. Taken there by Hugo Keenan. That's the first time we called his number in this game. Gibson Park. Gibson Park comes back this way to James Lowe. He kicks it over the top. That's a 50-22, except that it's caught in front of the 22 by Finn Russell, who sends it back the other way. James Lowe has to chase it inside the 22. He's able to secure it. Awkward angle there. Lowe goes for the dummy kick. Russell's chasing him down, and he's tackled. Well, good job by Finn Russell there. But he better roll away. He did roll away. Gibson Park. Xander Fagerson in on the tackle. Ruck form Josh Van at the back of that. Gibson Park to dig it out. Here comes Peter Omani over. Call to use it once already. Second time now. Finally, Gibson Park kicks it away. High into the air. Not much of a pursuit by Ireland. Taken there by Kyle Sten, who danced away from a couple tacklers. Goes sideways for 15 meters and gains no space. Tackle there by midfield. Skuma now with a carry. And that's obstruction by Christie. Yeah, crossing over. Christie cut in front there and prevented a tackle. That's just a dumb move there. That's because it was a dummy. Uh, Skuma did the dummy. Yeah, nobody was actually obstructed in that tackle, so unfortunate. Yeah. So a chance to put some points on the board here for Ireland now after that penalty. It's a sucky penalty, but it's a penalty. Crowley lines it up. Skuma with a big mistake there. It's not Christie's fault. 34-45 There's a slight din from the crowd. Jack Crowley now. He's made one out of one. This is 44 meters. So give Ireland a four-point lead. It's a straight shot. Long kick, though. Not 45 meters. Crowd starts to quiet down. Crowley lines it up. Here comes. He steps up. Boot hits the ball. That's going to go left. Wide left. No points. Remains a 7-6 to six game. Kinghorn from about his 15-meter line launches one over midfield. That's going to get James Lowe. No, it's Hugo Keenan. And there's Crowley. That was a 56-meter kick. Nicely done by Kinghorn. Wow, what a boot. Ball's high in the air. Kinghorn got it again. Ben White to Finn Russell does a dummy kick. Well, Ireland's all over the place. How'd they get back there so quickly? Scotland's in trouble here. Scotland in trouble. Man, they wasted a great opportunity to pick up some space. Just less than five minutes before halftime. Scotland needs to get rid of this ball. Clear the zone. I want to give a penalty here down close and give Ireland another chance to get points. Call to use it. Ball goes over the top by Ben White. Pass midfield to about the 10-meter line. Taken down there by Calvin Nash. Nash is tackled just short of midfield. Ball squirts out. Oh, Josh Vonderfler picks it up, and he knocks it on. So Scotland will get a scrum here with three and a half minutes remaining in the first half around midfield. Ball just squirted right out of Josh Vonderfler's hands. Picked it up. Oh, he never quite got a handle on it. He was being tackled from behind by McDowell. So tough break there for Josh van der Fleer.
Which Stormers game, Clinton? So here we go again. Crouch. Bind. Up. Oh, got the ref cam again as we reset the scrum. So next week we have for URC action, Sharks versus Ulster. And then we have Stormers versus Edinburgh at DHL Greenpoint Stadium. Dragons versus Bulls and Rodney Parade. Didn't see the Lions listed. All right, waiting for this scrum. We're down at two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Crouch. Bind. Set. Ben White puts it in the pipe. Just over the midfield line. Jack Dempsey's got a face covered in mud there. Boy, look at this. Gibson Park is wrong. He's not allowed to be there. So Scotland come away with it. Oh, Gibson Park, who was offsides, hits a tackle. No call there. He never retreated. So Scotland in midfield. Make no mistakes here. Maybe they can get a penalty and score three points to take the lead to go into halftime. Oh, and they knocked it on. What a mistake. This is what costs you games right here. This is what costs you games. Yeah, Gibson Park was trying to pop Finn Russell in the ribs to knock that ball loose. And that's how they wound up a few moments ago knocking it backwards. All right, so Scotland now has turned the ball over to Ireland and just a minute left in the half. One minute left. Oh, versus La Rochelle. Okay, that's why I asked. You're talking about the Champions Cup. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to URC action next week. They play Edinburgh. At home, they need to win that after that disastrous loss to the Bulls. Not looking good for the table there. They're barely in the playoffs. Or no, they're out of the playoffs. Excuse me. They're not even in the playoffs, the Stormers. 30 points. Crouch. Bind. Set. I mean, the Stormers need to win out to look respectable. Six wins, five losses. Use it as the call. Gibson Park digs it out. Scotland now going to have to defend. Gibson. Bundiaki goes to Jack Crowley to James Lowe. Lowe is driving forward. And uh, Scotland here, who had the ball, a chance to put some points up. If they give up anything here with just seconds left in the first half, going to be very bone-crushing. Bundiaki does a dummy, cuts back to the middle. He's taken down. Skum on there on the tackle. Whoa, ball nearly lost by McCarthy. Crowley, Henshaw with a carry now. Robbie Henshaw is taken down. Kalen Doris is tackled. Matt Fagerson just gets away in time. Peter Romani tackled. Not held, releases, gets up, does it textbook style. Whoa, he's thrown backwards. Peter Romani's tackled. Gibson Park. Porter now. He's tackled immediately. Gibson Park. Ireland looking for something. We're over the hooter. They go out to the far side. And another tackle made there. That ball popped loose, but no call for a knock on. Gibson Park to Porter. Porter back to Bundiaki. Bundiaki comes to the near side. Under the outside, Omani, and they've got Sheehan, but he, is he in touch? No. Scotland gets the ball back. They kick it up the pitch. The chase is on. Kinghorn, if he can get some wheels, will he get there? No. Ireland gets it. Oh, there's a high tackle there. Sheehan has it now. Now we're going back the other way. As Scotland players are gassed. They're booing for the high tackle, but the player went down. Kick over the top. Chase is on. Who's going to get it? Scotland has it. McDowell. What are we going to see? Is that the half? I think we're going to see a high tackle advantage back there. But the player slid down. Wow, Kinghorn had little option there as the player slid for the ball. It was a high tackle. So 
So we got an Irish player down getting some treatment here. 41-54, clock still ticking past the Hooter. Ireland now with a penalty advantage, but not kickable, so they're going to go for territory here. Who is the Ireland player? Is it Calvin Nash? It is Calvin Nash getting a little treatment there. Okay, he's staying in. All right, high tackle is the call. It was a correct call. I did say at the time. So Crowley kicking for some territory here from inside his 22. Boy, Scotland, another heartbreaker there. Kinghorn covered a lot of ground, beat the player who was ahead of him, and beat the player who had the angle, almost beat the player who had the angle. All right, so it's going to be a line out for Ireland just over midfield, 42-32 in the first half. Another chance to put some points on here late for Ireland. 26-meter gain there by Crowley. Dan Sheehan comes over to throw it in. Ireland taking the time getting up here. There's no rush. We're past the hooter here. This is borrowed time anyway. St. Patrick's Day weekend, Ireland at home at Aviva Stadium in Six Nations finale. Line out successful, Peter Amani. Gibson Park goes over the middle. Kalen Doris to Bundiaki. Bundiaki to Crowley. Crowley to James Lowe. Lowe over midfield. Be careful, Scotland. No penalties here. Gibson Lowe throws it to Bundiaki out on the wing. He's tackled by Duhan Fondimeva. And Ireland, close to that touchline, comes back to the middle. Oh, Crowley finds the space. Josh Vanderfleer slides through there. Gibson Park. Counter ruck comes from Scotland. Sloppy stuff here now. Ireland at the 10 meter line. Henshaw, he's tackled by George Turner. Gibson Park to Crowley. Crowley looking for some help. He gets tackled. Solid tackle by Skuman. They come wide, low, and they throw it into touch. That's half. That's the half. Wow, halftime. Seven to six. Woo. Seven to six at half. My goodness, folks. Wow, that was that was a half, wasn't it? Interesting half to say the very least. Interesting half to say the very least. Wow, folks. There you have it. Go Frystot. Frystot? What are you talking about Frystot? It's not a free state here. What's that all about? All right, so there we have it, folks. Um, halftime. Let me just get the halftime marker up there. So um, let's take a look at things. Italy won earlier, and so they are now... Italy and Wales have finished their Six Nations campaign. Italy finishes with two wins, a draw against France, a game they should have won, and two losses. And frankly, they should have won at least one of those games, if not both. Uh, Wales finishes no wins and five draws. They get the wooden spoon, for just four points on the log, all bonus points for closing. within. And they have the, the worst score. They have minus 51, so that's probably where they belong. Italy in fifth position, they will not advance from that, no matter what happens in France and Scotland. Um, England, with 12 points at the moment, theoretically could win the Six Nations because of their victory last week. If Ireland does not win here, if Scotland wins here by more than seven points, then England wins with a bonus point over France and they can win the whole enchilada. Yep, they sure can. So that game is at 4 p.m. today, France and England. Yep, it's a late nighter. It's an evening match, prime time, that game. Yep, so... Anyway, folks, wow. Uh, we've got uh, United Rugby Championship coming back up next week. Then the Champions Cup and the Challenge Cup will be coming back up. So halftime stats, let's see what we got here. We got uh, 73 carries by Ireland, just 48 by Scotland. 434 meters made by Ireland, 264 by Scotland. 68 tackles, 9 missed by Ireland. But Scotland, 116 tackles, and they missed 10. And Scotland creeping up on the penalties there with six here late. Yep, so there you go. Uh, most of the game has been played in Scotland's half or midfield. So 70, 80% of the game played in that middle of the field. So only 20% inside the 22 on each end. So possession 59% to 41 in favor of Ireland. A dominating on the stats side of the page, performance by Ireland in that first half, and they lead by a single point. A single point. I have Ireland winning by seven, so that doesn't help me. <laughs> when they were winning um, seven to three, I was okay, but with Scotland coming back, that kind of hurt me. Yeah, the Stormers, the Lions, and the Sharks are out of the playoffs at the moment. The Stormers could get into playoffs. The Lions have a chance still, but they're going to have to start winning out. going to be tough to do since they'll be going on the road to Europe. Yeah, gain line success, 18 for Ireland, 11 for Scotland. So Scotland needs to, you know, they've had a couple chances here, and they just didn't get it done. Just didn't get it done. Dominant tackles. Scotland's had 10 of those. That's interesting. And they've won three turnovers to two. So that's impressive. 
But uh, that's your first half stats, folks, for this Six Nations game. Right now, if it ended this way, Scotland would get an additional point, which would take them to 12 on the log. And Ireland would have 20 to finish first place. No one can catch them at 20. They must lose this game and not get a bonus point. So Scotland has to win by seven points or more in order for England or France to steal this thing. France, I don't know if France, can France actually win it? It seems unlikely. Yeah. No, the point differential is the thing for Ireland. The point differential is so big. During the anthem, Peter Romani was crying. Why is he crying? Didn't see that. They're showing a replay of it in slow motion of him crying. Now they're showing the highlights of the first half. Interesting. Yeah, so at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, uh, Scotland drew first blood with an easy penalty right down the middle. And they scored three points on that. And they're off to the races. And then they gave up an easy try. Unfortunately, a big mistake by Scotland. Otherwise, this is a 6-3 to three game, Scotland. Hmm. Unfortunate for them. Unfortunate for them. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, folks. Rough night of not sleeping. <laughs> so in Major League Rugby today, let's take a look at that while we've got a few moments here. Major League Rugby. We already covered the Premier League, and congratulations once again to Gloucester who won who won the Premier League in England over Leicester Tigers and Andre Pollard. Okay, so let's take a look at the schedule for today in Major League Rugby. We've got uh, 2 p.m. It's New England hosting New Orleans Gold, NOLA Gold, at the Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy, Massachusetts. It's a rather small stadium, but they do a good job selling it out. This is week three of Major League Rugby. At home at Monumental Sports Marquee Plus, that's who's broadcasting. This is the Maryland Soccerplex in Germantown. So Old Glory is playing at yet another location. They've not been consistent in their, their spots the entire time they've been around. So they're not no longer in Leesburg, Virginia this year. They were in D.C. Catholic University. Then they were in Leesburg, and now they're in Germantown, Maryland. Old Glory is hosting Chicago Hounds, who had a nice win last week. Of course, some of the players we know. Um, from around Major League Rugby were there playing for them Chicago when I went to that game last year. That's at 4 p.m. So 2 and 4 o'clock we have games. Then at 8 p.m. today, it's Houston hosting Miami, the Sharks, a new franchise, expansion franchise. At 9 p.m. tonight, um, it's Utah versus Seattle. That's a game I might actually get to watch on the Rugby Network. All of you can watch these games on the Rugby Network, especially if you're overseas, you won't be blacked out. Uh, you can watch all Major League Rugby games for free. And, of course, one... One reason to watch these games is that uh, Major League Rugby is chock full of South African rugby players, people like Johan Mumsen and others. Yep. So um, then we've got uh, also tonight at 10 o'clock, San Diego hosting Los Angeles. Tomorrow, the new expansion franchise in the Carolinas in Charlotte, it's Anthem Rugby Club, will be hosting the Dallas Jackals, who had a big win last week. It was surprising. And then when, that's it for the week. So no games just one game on Sunday. The rest are today. So the standings in Major League Rugby at, the, at this moment. Uh, after two weeks, the Houston Sabercats are out in first place in the Western Conference with eight points. Seattle's tied with them at eight points. The Utah's one win from two games, six points. The Legion, one win from two at six points. And the Jackals, one win from two at six points. Only the former Atlanta franchise in Los Angeles has no victories, 0-2. But they do have two points, two bonus points they've picked up. So <clears throat> in the... Eastern Conference, the NOLA Gold are the class of the conference with nine points, two victories and a bonus point there. New England Free Jacks, uh, defending champions at one win, one loss, seven points. Or was it New England or is it New York? New York is defending champions, am I not mistaken? Old Glory, D.C., um, in third place with five points. Chicago in fourth with four points. Miami, fifth, no wins. And Anthem, no wins, sixth. We no longer have a New York franchise. We no longer have an Atlanta franchise. We no longer have a Toronto franchise. Very disappointing for Major League Rugby fans, to say the least. Ruben's here. Good to see you there. It's disappointing, to say the very least. Anyway, um, good to see people staying with us. Uh, have we done anything here? Oh, we have gotten no new subscribers today. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Well, those Europeans can watch this game, so they're not, they're not going to listen into this, most likely. Excuse me as I stretch, folks. And yawn. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> anyway, there you have it. Okay, so um, 
The second half needs to be a lot more exciting, ladies and gentlemen. This is not exactly a barn burner here. Jack Crowley missed one kick there late in the first half. Otherwise, the score would be 10 to 7. 10 to 6, excuse me, 10 to 6. So Major League Rugby underway for what is this, the seventh season or something like that now. Let me just take a look and see. And let me look up USMLR. I think we might be in our seventh. Google. Uh, Major League. Major League Rugby. Let's see if I can get the Wikipedia page for that. Is there a Wikipedia page? There it is. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, it started in 2017. First season was 2018. Yep. Yep. They had the shortened season because of COVID. So 2018, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. Is this the seventh season? Yeah, that's what I said, seventh season. Okay. Yeah, New England is the most recent champions. That's correct. They won their first title. Yep. Seattle has two titles. So, yeah, let's take a look. Um, current franchises are New England, D.C., Carolina, Chicago, New Orleans, Miami, Dallas, Houston, Utah, Seattle, L.A., and San Diego. The big challenge, of course, is the geographic spread. The only teams that are relatively close are Dallas, Houston, and New Orleans. Uh, everyone else is really far apart. Um, and San Diego and, and uh, Los Angeles are close. Yeah, so let's see. So in the league, we started with the Austin Elite, and they became the Austin Gilgronies. They lasted from 2018 through 2022, and they are gone because the owner, <laughs> he left. The Glendale Raptors started, and then they became the Colorado Raptors for one season, uh, and then they're gone. Other founding franchises were the Houston Sabercats, the San Diego Legion, Seattle Seawolves, Utah Warriors, and NOLA Gold. Those five teams remain. Rugby United New York entered the league in 2019, and uh, stayed that way, Rooney, until 2021. And then for the 2022-2023 season, they were known as the Iron Workers, but they're gone. Toronto also entered in 2019 and departed this past year, too. New England Free Jacks, Old Glory, entered the league in 2020. Both are still with the league now. Rugby Atlanta entered in 2020. That was three expansion teams that year. So in two years, they'd added five teams, which is pretty exciting. And uh, Unfortunately, um, the growth of league uh, teams is disappearing, so... There was a time there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the league has never really been bigger, about 12 teams. But uh, Rugby Atlanta went away after three seasons when the owner passed away and now is the Los Angeles franchise. The Los Angeles Giltinis came around and were around for just a couple seasons. Um, they were owned by the Australian sports apparel maker who also bought the Austin team. And because they cheated, um, eventually their owner withdrew the franchises from the league. And that was after L.A. won a championship. The Dallas Jackals entered the season or entered the league in 2022, and the Chicago Owls 2023. This year, Miami and Anthem, and the Anthem from Carolina. So, in the last three seasons, four teams have joined the league. Unfortunately, two teams, three teams have left. Four teams have left. So, yeah, they've matched the number of teams. Four have joined, four have left. Yeah. So, former teams include the Colorado Raptors, the LA Giltinis, Austin Gilgronis, the Toronto Arrows, and Rugby United New York. Yeah, champions. The first champion, of course, 2018 was Seattle, and there are seven teams in the league. They beat Glendale Raptors 23-19, an exciting uh, championship. And the same thing the next season. That was an even better game. Nine teams in the league. Seattle beat the San Diego Legion 23-26. to And then the 2020 season, there was no championship because of the pandemic, scam scamdemic. And then 2021, the Los Angeles team beat Rugby Atlanta 31-17. And then Rugby United beat Seattle 30-15. There were 13 teams in the league that season. And now we're back to 12. And New England Free Jacks won last year 25-24 over San Diego. So there's your champions. One, two, three, four, five different teams have won in the... Wait. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three... Four teams have won in the five different championships. Seven seasons, five championships. One season because of the, the uh, lockdown, there was nothing. And now this is the seventh season, which obviously we haven't gotten there yet. So... Yeah, the teams with the most playoff appearances were Seattle and New York. New York's no longer around. They had four playoff appearances. San Diego's also had four playoff appearances. Rugby Atlanta had two, and other teams had two. So Nola's never had a playoff appearance. They look good this season. Austin is gone. Dallas hasn't had a playoff appearance, nor has Chicago, but they're recent additions to the league. So, yep. What else we got here to say about it? Yeah, they created these cups, and... Cups are inactive. Um, active. So the Texas Cup was between Austin and Houston, and Austin won it three times. Lone Star champs, Austin, Houston, and Dallas, and Austin won it once. The Cali Cup for California, and L.A. won it twice. San Diego won it once. 
the Champagne Cup, New York and LA, each won at once. The Cuisine Solutions Cup, that's an old glory thing. They've won it twice. Austin's won it once. The Gillies Cup, that was for those, those teams from the Australian guy. Uh, the Gillies Cup, um, three times for LA and once for Austin. The Fire and Ice Cup, Rugby Atlanta, won it three times over Toronto. And the Chowda Cup, New England Free Jacks, over five times over Rugby United New York. Wow. So the Chowda, like in clam chowder. <laughs> Player of the Year for Major League Rugby 2019, Brad Tucker, Seattle, Mike Te- uh, Teo, Mikey Teo from Utah in 2021. And then Bowden Waka for New England 2022 and Jason Potras for New England in 2023. The forward of the year, Patty Ryan in 2019 for San Diego and our own Johan Mumpson, Rugby Atlanta in 2021. Brendan O'Connor, Rugby United 2022. And Vian Conradi from Namibia last year was the forward of the year. Yep. So, and there's more players here. Getting ready to start the second half here. Daniel Creel, is he one of the Creel brothers, David and uh, Richard? Daniel Creel for Seattle won the Community Award. Hmm. All right. As the Scotland side comes out of the locker room, we're ready to start the second half here in just moments away. Let me take away the scoreboard halftime there. All right. Hoping for Scotland to win. They deserve the Six Nations. They're not going to win it, though, Ruben. <clears throat> they won't win the Six Nations. A win's not going to do it for them. Just don't have enough points. Let's take a look at the Six Nations. Scotland has 11, a bonus point when we get them 16, which would tie them with Ireland, but they're going to have to score like 100 points in the second half. They have, they're, they're 76 points behind. Let's see what happens here. Okay, Ireland back on the pitch for the second half. So we lost a few people. I guess I got bored with my Major League Rugby readings. Christie had a good first half for Scotland. Excuse me. Well, they will get a triple crown by beating... The other sides, if they win, Scotland. So there is something to win here for Scotland. Scotland's got some work to do. 7-6, to six, Ireland over Scotland. Second half underway in moments. Jack Crowley will kick to Scotland to start the second half. Here's the whistle. Crowley to the far side of the pitch, outside the 22. Scotland goes up and comes down with it into the hands of Grant Gilchrist. Ruck is formed. Ben White is there. Scotland players come rushing over to extend that ruck. Call to use it. <clears throat> ben White launches it high into the air. Chase on from the wing from Kinghorn. Taken there by Hugo Keenan. Keenan cuts back to the middle. And Christie takes him down along with McDowell. Scotland puts the defense out on the wing. And James Lowe <clears throat> bounces off of Kyle Sten, wow. And Buniaki has it now inside the 22. A nice offload by James Lowe to keep from going to touch. Ireland on the front foot, but they throw the ball. Bounces on the turf. Peter Omani inside the 22, driving. Ben White takes him down. Ireland now. Hugo Keenan again, who got this all started moments ago. Inside the 22, Ireland driving. Ruck form. Gibson Park to the center. Peter Omani drives to the 22. Scotland's defense is adjusted now. Pour to the crowd, pouring it on, cheering loudly for Ireland. This crowd is going bat crap crazy here, folks. Job. James Lowe started it all up. No, it wasn't James Lowe. It was Hugo Keenan who started it off. Short-term memory there, buddy. Gibson Park. Tag Furlong with a carry. Inside the 22 is Ireland now. Crowley. Calvin Nash, he's down, taken down. Kalen Doris now, back at the 22 in the middle of the pitch. Gibson Park is there, pops loose, but there is a penalty. Off their feet is Scotland, that's right in front of the post. Guarantee you that Ireland's going to take these points. Scotland off their feet on a dumb penalty right there. 
Went against Xander Fagerson. They're going for the post. Yep. Bad decision there by Xander Fagerson. The Lowe's having a good game here. Bundiaki also having a good game here. He's made some really nice tackles. He did get beat on one tackle, but he's had some really nice tackles in this game. Well, that was pretty close. I, didn't, I don't know that Xander Ferguson really actually committed a foul there. Did not look like he did, but that was the call, giving Ireland a gifted three points here and padding the lead, helping my super brute simultaneously. 21 seconds on the clock, Crowley, and that one goes through the post. Straight and true. 10-7, Ireland out in front now. Ten six now. Oh, and Scotland kicks it. Finn Russell straight into touch. It'll be a scrum at midfield. Another mistake from Scotland. Oh, my goodness. Finn Russell kicked that ball straight into touch on the restart. 43-23 on the clock in the second half. Well, that was a mistake. My goodness. One more game after that, that of course is later today, England and France. Ireland now has an 84 point lead on the log. Irish crowd starting to sing now. Oh, they are singing big time. Hey, James Moriarty. Ireland win a penalty on the scrum. There goes Gibson Park. He throws it wide. James Lowe kicks it, and it bounces off the leg of Blair Kinghorn. Going to come back for the penalty at the scrum. Wheeling the scrum is the call. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, Scotland scrum is not looking very good. He just drove into them. So Crowley will kick for territory here. My goodness, they are singing their butts off. My favorite to really place Rossi. I don't know. Would you be crazy if I said Jake White? <laughs> Would you say I'm crazy if I said Jake White? <laughs> All right, here we go. Ireland line out. 20 meters away from Scotland. Oh, we got a whistle here. All right, uh, Scotland's walking of the gap. I'm not sure John Dobson's ready. Lineout's good from Sheehan. Gibson Park over to the middle. Bundiaki now fighting through the 22. He's tackled. Ireland on the front foot here. Sheehan with a carry. Scotland needs to adjust. Their defense has been stout. The one try was a mistake. It had nothing to do with the defense. Gibson Park tries to scoop by, but Christie's there. McCarthy now, Ireland six meters away. Xander Fagerson on the tackle. Gibson Park to Porter, a uh, Porter, Tad Furlong. Tad Furlong spins off a tackle in front of the post. Gibson Park, Scotland's in some trouble here now. Crowley, James Lowe, back to... My goodness. Gibbs, Gibson Park digs it out. Hands it off to Robbie Henshaw. Henshaw's tackled. Heading back to the center of the field now. Budiaki. Budiaki down to a meter away. Here comes Ireland. They go high. And they overthrow it. It's going to be picked up by Scotland, but I think it was knocked on. Ah. Oh. Scotland was offside. Peter Romani's asking a question. Calls offside. Uh, 
All right. They want to do, they're making a decision here, debating it. Peter Omani wants an answer. What's your answer here? Tap and go. Ireland's going to go for the points. Tap and go. Big decision, 47 minutes, 23 seconds. And the crowd loves it. The crowd loves it. Tag burn to pick it up. From the five meter line. And they're down to a meter. Ireland pouring it on now. Ball's just short of the try line. They're trying to go through. Stopped. It's short. Oh, they're over. But it popped loose. We're going to have to go to the booth to see. That ball came squirting out of there. I don't know if he got it down or not. I think he did. Who was it? So Finn Russell arguing with uh, Matthew Carley. Now Carl Dixon saying we got to check the grounding. Yeah. No try. Yeah, it's no try is the on-field decision. I agree with that. So I think Tad Furlong is the one who might have got the try. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's no try. Wait, let's see it again. No, that's not a try. That ball was knocked loose. He didn't have possession. There's a hand in there from Scotland. There's a hand that knocked the ball loose, but not from that angle. You can't see. You got to see it from the other angle. Here it is. And there it is right there. We're looking for separation here. I think there was separation. I, mean, I want Ireland to win, but I think this is a no try. There it is. Yep. That angle is not conclusive. So here we go. Now this is the angle we need. Ah, that angle, you got to slow it down a little bit more. That's close. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the angle. Ah, that ball's loose. That's not a try. They're cheering, but that's not a try. That's not a try. Tough break for Tad Furlong, but that ball is knocked loose. Yep. Uh, so it would be a, a, block, a lost forward. Ball was lost forward, yeah, clearly. Yeah, ball was lost. But, yep, that's why I said there's no try. No try. Yeah, correct. Big, big no moments. Listen to this crowd. They're not amused. They're not amused. Tag Furlong lost control. I said that. I called it. I called it live. Didn't look like it was a try. Well, not live. Moments after it happened, I should say. I, I'm excited by the try, but looking at it. So, goal line kick. But Ireland are putting the pressure on Scotland now. Boy, the crowd is really unhappy. Yeah, Carl Dixon saw it loose from the sideline. Oh, Ireland has it now. Kalen Doris from just over midfield down to the 10-meter line. He carries. 48 minutes in the contest now. Gibson Park to dig it out of the ruck. Crowd has come back down now. Oh, boy, what a mess. That's a knock-on. Big mistake. McCarthy and Furlong got confused there. Knock-on by Ireland there as that pass came up and was hit by Furlong off his shoulder and goes forward. So Scotland will the scrum now. Substitutions coming, one and two. Who's one and two, Ireland or Scotland? Probably Scotland. Let's see who's coming in. Yeah, Scotland's got substitutions coming in. Ewan Ashman's coming in. Skuban, who's been a non-factor in this game, comes out. 16 is 17. And Roy Sutherland. All right, Roy Sutherland is in.
Turner's had a decent game, but Pierre Schumann has been absent without leave here in this game. So you and Ashman and Roy Southern come in that front row. So let's see what happens here. Just 48 minutes into the contest, Schumann is out. Referee Cam, I can see right in the huddle again. Crouch. Bind. Set. Scotland gets it out of the ruck. They go to the short side of the pitch. Ben White, he's got help. Kinghorn. Oh, Kinghorn's driving. All the way down to the 22. Ben White. And Ewan Ashman with his first carry. They go wide. Christie now. Christie gets through the first tackle. His ball bounces off the turf. Picked up by Jack Dempsey. Dempsey gets through. He fight. Oh, he throws it right to Gibson Park. Oh, there were no Scotland trailing runners. It was Gibson Park who got the ball. Ah, shame. So Ireland has it back. 10-6. Caitlin Doris. Boy, Gibson Park is having a monster of a game for Ireland. He's Johnny on the spot for tackles. Johnny on the spot for his theft. He's having a good kicking game. He's offloading the ball very well. He sends it back. Here's a kick. Crowley took forever to kick that. Doesn't find touch. Picked up by Kinghorn at midfield. He sends it over to the center. Finn Russell now coming up to the 10-meter line looking for help. He dumps it back to Duan Fondamer, who's been a non-factor in this game. In fact, hurt his team with two penalties. Finn Russell goes wide. Oh, Kyle Sten is picked up and thrown to the ground by James Lowe. Nice tackle there by Lowe. Oof, man. Xander Fagerson, the only front rower left there for Scotland. He's tackled. Ben White. No, oh, that went forward. It was touched by an Ireland player, though. That wasn't forward. That one wasn't forward. That was clearly backwards. It just that was just a you know even up the score thing call there. Oh my goodness! Fifty one minutes now. Fifty one minutes of the contest. And Ireland leads ten six in a less than exciting game so far, folks. And now we've got uh, is Furlong getting treatment. Tad Furlong getting treatment there. Neck, tilting it back and forth. Matthew Carley getting a drink down on the pitch. Wow, Scotland's made 174 tackles now. Ireland's only been forced to make 69, 79. They missed 10. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy, folks. So Furlong's going out. Tag Furlong is going out. He's being replaced by Finley Bielham. Finley Bielham makes his appearance. This corn rose. 5106 now. We've got a scrum here for Ireland. Just a single try in this game, and it was a mistake by Scotland that handed the ball over to Ireland, inches away from the try line, and it was scored by Sheehan. Crouch. Bind. Set. Gibson Park to put it in. Pipe, he does. Um, this thing crumbles again. Scotland blown off the penalty won by Ireland. My goodness. Oh, what a hit. Crowley gets taken down. Ball's bouncing inside the 22. Somebody's got to get there. Do you want to find him ever? Finally picks it up, but barely holds on the ball, and he's buried by James Lowe and Calvin Nash and Hugo Keenan, and now the ball's loose on the turf. Scotland in a lot of trouble here. Rock formed, and Ireland not rolling away. Man, oh man, oh man. Irish player finally gets away. It was, he, it was Henshaw. Robbie Henshaw stuck in there. So crowd booing because it's not come out yet. 52 minutes off the clock. 
That ball's cleared by Ben White, but he's not going to get very far. That mark's not even outside the 22. Wow. Oh, Scotland, a lot of trouble here. Their scrum is falling apart. Man, oh man, oh man. Fifty two twenty four now in the contest. Ireland's still in front ten to six, and they're gonna have a line out inside the Scotland twenty two. Sheehan for the line out again. Oh, it was an HIA. Okay, so tag for a long one for an HIA, not replaced in the game. Line out to Kaelin Doris. It's back in the hands of Van der Fleer. Van der Fleer to Gibson Park. Gibson Park to Aki. Gibson Park back to Henshaw. He somehow holds on to it. He's tackled in the middle of the pitch. Oh, John Van der Fleer. Van der Fleer down to five meters. Ireland driving. Gibson Park comes this way. Joe McCarthy to James Lowe to the wing. Here he comes on the outside. Calvin Nash finds space. It almost gets in. What a cutback. Knock on. Oh, my goodness. Scotland saved themselves. Calvin Nash cut back and tried to win it. I think Christie's responsible for knocking that ball loose. Look grim for Scotland. I didn't see the knock on down here low. Nash cuts back around four players and it almost gets in, but Gilchrist holds him up. So Christy, where's the knock on? There's the knock on, yep. Yep, stripped. Nicely done by Scotland down low. Calvin Nash almost got over there. Wow. Daylight just shut down on him. Christy getting a little treatment now. Andy Christie has made 20 tackles in this game, folks. 20 tackles for Scotland. And we're only 53 minutes into the contest. That's insane. That's insane. Ireland can't let Scotland hang around like this, folks. They cannot let them hang around like this. I mean, right now, the score favors me across the board. Crowd is cheering or jeering. Take your pick. Scotland with a line out around their five meters, a scrum around their five meters. Whistle blows. Restart it. It was folding in, he says. Matthew Carley accuses both sides of folding in. You're going to reset it. Crowd is shaming Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. Here we go. White with the lot with the uh, ball. Put it into the scrum. Crouch. Bind. Set. White hasn't put in yet. Now it's finally in there. Oh, but it goes the wrong direction. Scotland's going to lose this. Oh, they somehow get it back. And they go forward. Ball's placed. Somehow Scotland come away with that in the scrum. I don't know how they pulled that off. That ball didn't go backwards, but stayed in the middle, and Ireland was pushing forward. They almost had it. Call to use it. Ben White's got to dig it out and use it quickly here. He kicks the ball, and that's going to get into touch and brought into play. Nope, Calvin Nash pretends he's going to bring into play. No, nothing. So about a 28-meter gain. Actually not bad, given the circumstances there. Oh, Ryan Barrett is in the game. Sorry. It was Ryan Barrett. He's in the game. Ronan Kelleher comes in the game. McCarthy's out. All right, so some changes here. Porter's still out there. Ronan Kelleher now is the hooker for Ireland. His first toss in, it goes astray. And did Josh Vonderfler get it? No, Zander Fagerson comes away with it. Scotland now in good shape. Coming up the midfield, Finn Russell's going to kick it to the corner the other side. That's going to be short of the 22, taken on the fly there by 
Ireland. They're going to kick it back the other direction. Is somebody home? Yes. It's Finn Russell. He's hoisting it. And Scotland players are not retreating. Oh, Finn Russell wins it from Baird. And Scotland has it. But here comes a counter ruck from Ireland. Scotland now. Well done. That ball bounces off the turf. It goes backwards. They're going to say it's a knock-on. But that was touched by a boot, not by a hand. Scotland turns it over. Duan Vandenberg looks very frustrated. He was wide open and nobody saw him. Oh, it was Vandenberg that won that play. That's not a knock on. It was kick forward. Gregor Townsend not looking happy up in the booth, folks. So is Vandenberg coming out? Peter Armani getting some trivia. I think, I'm not sure if Fundamev is going out or not. Gary Ringrose coming in. So Gary Ringrose comes in the game. It's replacing Calvin Nash. So a cheap penalty by Scotland. That ball's kicked. Oh, what a great kick. What a great kick. Scotland tries to save it, but it's a 40-meter territory gain as Kinghorn can't keep it in play. He jumps up and just he went right through his fingers. Oh, uh, what a mistake by Blair Kinghorn. He just had a chance there. So now it's an Ireland line out. It's eight meters away. Successful to Peter Omani. They come down with her into a rolling mall. Kelleher at the back. Gibson Park gets his hands on it. He brings it out. They're playing advantage now. Ireland has advantage already. I didn't see what the advantage was for. Use it as a call. They go center. Bundiaki back to Ring Rose. Ring Rose is held on to and tackle there. Back to the center. Robbie Henshaw with a carry. Another advantage here. Ireland. Gibson Park to Josh van der Fleer. He runs into a wall. He's taken down. Baird. Ring rose. Ball pops loose and Scotland gets it, but it was an advantage we're going to come back for. 57-38 here. Fundamover's not happy. He and Bundiaki are just chatting now. It's going to be a five-meter line-out based on where they're going to take it, closing the gap in the line-out. Really? He called a penalty for closing the gap in the line-out? Ireland's been doing that all day. So it's a five-meter line-out now. When will the bow break for Scotland? They've been standing up all game. The sole try they've given up should never have happened. It was not because of their defense. It was because their offense was atrocious. So we have a five-meter line out. What's taking so long here? we got water boys on the field all of a sudden. 58 minutes o'clock is stopped. So here we go. There's a line out for Ireland now, five meters out, 58 minutes. Scotland, will they hold or break? Line out successful into them all. They're trying to drive forward. It's going forward now. Kelleher now. They're going to, there's space on that. Okay, they got a defender over there. Duan find him ever came over. Oh, they're down to a meter. Ruck is formed. Great overhead view there. Ireland now. Pick and go. Stopped again. Scotland defending. Pick and go again. They stop him this time again. This can't continue forever. They need a turnover or it's going to break. 
Tag Bird now with a carry. He stopped. Ireland's actually losing a couple inches on every carry here now. Ball still laying on the turf. Here they go again. Porter goes down. Another phase. Close, but they stop it. Scotland still holding bravely, but here they come again. They're going to go wide now. Oh, they stop him at three meters now. They got space on the outside. Lost forward. Ring Rose lost it forward, and Scotland saved by a knock on. Oh, incredible. Ring Rose knock on. Just into the game. Gary Ring Rose knocks it on. Scotland holds on again, but they got to get points here. They can't keep living dangerously. It was actually a bad pass by Gibson Park behind Ring Rose off his right hip, but he still should have had it. Oh, my goodness. Approaching the final 20 minutes of this game, Scotland yet to score a try. Yet to score a try. Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. We're down the final 20 minutes of the contest. Ireland, Scotland, Aviva Stadium, Dublin, full house, raucous crowd. Clock is still ticking. We're ready for a scrum. Scotland has got to get a good clearance out of this. The scoreboard is not changing. Ireland has spent an eternity down here, and they've got no points. Crowd urging them on, exhorting Ireland. Fine. Set. White better have a better. I want a penalty against Ireland for collapsing the scrum. Wow. A get out of jail card. Ronnie Kelleher goes down. My goodness. Scotland, what a breathing break there. Finn Russell can clear this now for some territory. My goodness. And then they'll have a line out. Talk about pulling disaster out of the fire. Russell kicks it down the pitch. Let's see where the mark is. Up around the 10-meter line. It's a good clearance kick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Porter, not Kelleher. 50 people here currently. 42 likes. Thanks for that, folks. Finley Bielham now. Looking a little disappointed in that. My goodness. Line out successful. And it's Matt Fagerson who's in the game who got that now for Scotland. They're into a mall, but it's really kind of a weird looking mall. And George Horn is coming at scrum half. Rory Darge is out. Stafford McDowell is out. Oh, Ireland screws the pooch. Scotland down to the 22 now. And there's a knockout advantage. I think they're playing Kinghorn now. Ball squirts loose. I guess there was no knockout advantage as they're running down the turf. And Ireland's going all the way. Ring Rose tackled inside the 22. Do on find him ever. Finally caught him. What a turnaround. Scotland knocking on the door. And now Ireland back. Ryan Baird now. There's a penalty for being offsides. Gibson Park. Boy, Scotland knows how to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Gibson Park. They're playing advantage. Robbie Henshaw offloads the ball. Inside Scotland's 22. Kelleher now. He's tackled. Crowd goes nuts. Channing Ireland. Ball on the near side now. Tackle made over here. Another advantage. George Horn. Ireland and Kalen Doris throws it at the feet. Great job by Peter Omani to keep that thing from falling away. Fighting all the way to the turf. Ireland, Gibson Park's going to get through. He's down to two meters. Tackle from behind. Ireland knocking on the door. Another advantage. My goodness, Scotland is finally going to break here. Three advantages. Crowd is standing all over Aviva Stadium. Ireland a couple meters out. Peter Romani. 
63-35. They're three meters away. Right in front of the post. Call to use it. Pick and go. Nothing. Bealum now trying to dig it out. Finley Bealum. He picks and goes. Goes nowhere. Advantage arm is still up. I don't know if that's a new advantage. I think it's a new advantage. I think they're going to get a penalty try here in a moment. Gibson Park. Is it held up? It's held up. Robbie Henshaw's over, but I don't know if he got it down initially. I think we're going to go to the booth because Matthew Carley never saw if it was actually down. I couldn't see either. He might have gotten it down. It might have been held up. It was definitely held up after the initial contact. Whistle blown, 64-13. Oh, there's going to be a yellow card against Scotland regardless. No try. Marius van der Westhuizen must be the TMO. On-field decisions, no try. But Scotland's going to go 10 minutes without a player here. Okay, let's see the replay. Does he get it? Not there. Not there. Not there. No. Not there. No, that's held up the whole time. Yeah, there isn't enough evidence. Yeah, there's no try there. Nothing, no try. Now, that's what I thought. The arm was underneath the whole time. Now, it's not inconclusive. The TV now says it's conclusive that the arm is... Okay, now this might be a different angle. Let's see. Nope. Yep, no, that's never a try. Never a try. No, it's not a try. It's conclusive. But it was. But there will be a yellow card for Scotland. They're going to be down a player after three consecutive penalties. So they're going to have to go 10 minutes without a player here. And it's going to be called against uh, Elliot Miller Mills. I didn't even know he's in the game. Peter Armani goes out. Penalties in succession with 18 being the last one for offside, so he's going in the bin. Number 18. 18. Elliot Miller Mills, I didn't even know he was in the game, and he gets a yellow card. Sixteen. You and Ashman. Yellow card. You and Ashman, they lost the hooker. He gets it, but Scotland committed three consecutive penalties. Yeah, that's the right call. So you and Ashman is the victim there because he committed the last penalty. All right, now they're short a man, and I think we're going to go with a tap and go here by Ireland. Peter Monty went off to a massive applause when he stepped off the pitch. So, here we go. Tap and go. Kelleher. Scotland down a player. Tap and go. They do it. Oh, they're over this time. Did they get it? They got it. Andrew Porter got it and throws the ball in the stands. He got a big spot of blood coming off his ear. So, Porter gets a try. And Ireland's pretty much sealed this game at this stage. Scotland has shown nothing on offense. So, wow. That's his try sixth try. So Ireland's going to wrap it up here. So the England-France game is just, you know, for ticket sales at this point. Crowley should make this. He does, and it's 17-6 to with 15 minutes remaining. Ireland fans, very happy. And don't forget, 
Scotland's down a man for the next nine minutes. That actually never got on the ground over the line. <laughs> anyway, it's close enough. It's close enough. So Irish fans happy on St. Patrick's Day weekend. Here's the kick. High into the air. Gibson Park sends it back the other way. It's going to find touch, and it'll be a Scotland line out on Ireland's side of the pitch at about 35 meters. All right, Scotland's got to do something now. Down a man. They need to score quickly here. Something. It needs to be a try. Down 11 points. So Matt Fagerson is going to throw the line out in here. Okay, and uh, Kyle Rowe comes in for Blair Kinghorn. Matt Fagerson throws it in and overthrows it, and Ireland gets it, and Kelleher has it. So Scotland squanders a, an opportunity here. Things are looking grim now. High in the air to the near side. And that's taken successfully by Scotland by Kyle Rowe, his first play of the game. He gets the high ball. But Scotland's gave up some space there. George Horn now in the scrum half. Horn to dig it out. Ruck is there, short of midfield. George Horn over the top. Short kick. Where'd it go? Scotland comes away with it, but it's a knock-on, I believe. Yep, it'll be a scrum to Ireland. Just 13 minutes remaining here, folks. Six Nations is going to go to Ireland this year, which is not a surprise. All right. Keen Healy comes into the game. Keenan Healy into the game. James Larmore, or Jordan Larmore. Byrne comes in. Harry Byrne for Larmore. I didn't even know Larmore was out there. There's Larmore. Crowd singing. Change also for Ireland at out half. Into the game comes Harry wow. Byrne. What a, what an atmosphere to go to a game like this. South Africans, it, it loved to suddenly start singing a snot cup song. What would that be like? <laughs> Andy Christie is out for Scotland. George Turner. Hang on. Christie's out. He had a hell of a game for Scotland. Unfortunately, a terrible effort by Scotland here. Vine. Oops, I've lost my feed. There it is. It's back. Set. So we're about to conclude our Six Nations coverage this season, folks, as we gin up for summer test for the Springboks. Curry Cup coming along as well. Major League Rugby already underway. The Premier League over now. Gloucester having won that. And still continuing with the URC season. Eleven minutes, thirty seconds remain. Crouch. Connor Murray getting ready to come in. Over leaning on the far side. This one's called against Rory Sutherland for Scotland. It's all just coming apart for them. Still 536 on that yellow card. Connor Murray didn't come in. They're going for another scrum. Killing the yellow card and killing the clock simultaneously, but Ireland doesn't have a player in the band. Scotland does. <clears throat> Connor Murray, if he gets in the game, he'll have 116 caps for Ireland. Crouch. Bind. He's the only one left on the bench. Set. I think Kim Redpath is the only Scotland player left on the bench. That went to ground. No call. He's just going to dig it out. So Gibson Park kicks it over the top. Ball's going to go down just short of the 22. Taken there and there by Scotland. They send it back the other direction. That's a 50-22. Oh, no. It went into touch. 
Oh, my goodness. Kyle Rowe kicks it straight in the touch. Going to come all the way back. Insult to injury. When it rains, it pours for Scotland. It rains, it pours. My goodness. Oh, things are looking grim. Oof. Gibson Park is coming out. Connor Murray will come into the game. <clears throat> yeah, Jameson Gibson Park, probably the man of the match for this one here. If Scotland had won it, Christie was in the mix, but no dice. And ball's knocked backwards and nearly stolen and is stolen by Scotland, but it was a knock-on. Oh, playing the arm in the air, penalty. Scotland players down. Is it Dempsey? Oh, that's marginal. My goodness. He didn't even affect the play. That's crap. That's a very soft penalty, Matthew Carley. That's that's a weak call. The ball was already lost when he touched his arm. That's And they're coming down. That's just crap. That's just crap. Meters conceded from penalties. Hmm. 193 by Scotland. Wow. Just 27 by Ireland. Beautiful purple sky, folks. Wow. Wow. It's remarkable. All right, so Ireland's chance to pour up the run up the scoreboard here. So about nine meters away now for another line out after that dumb penalty which wasn't really a penalty. That was a pretty lame call. Here we go. Kelleher to throw it in. He does. Successful. Kalen Doris. Scott Cummings is out. Sam Skinner is in. Call to use it once. Ireland still going forward. Oh, they nearly break free. They're down to one meter away, two meters away. Driven backwards by George Turner. Scotland win a penalty, or is it a knock-on? 244. Well, they had great defense in this game. The the tries they've given up in because they've been put in a very short field. Both tries. So Scotland can't blame itself for its defense, which has been tenacious this game. Their offense has been atrocious. Seventeen to six. Late in the game. Got one new subscriber. Whoever you are, thank you for that. Last week, England, Ireland, we had 1,100 views. This one's half that. Of course, it's anticlimactic. A lot of people probably don't care, aren't even watching this weekend. Scotland's had to make 229 tackles to 87. Wow. It's crazy. Crouch. Still two minutes on that yellow card. Bind. Set. George Horn digs it out. Duhan Feynmanova. He never came out. So Finn Russell kicks it away. Duan Fondam haven't been a non-factor in this game. Non-factor. One minute, ten seconds left on the yellow card. Seven minutes remain. Ronan Kelleher to throw it in for Ireland. Line out successful into a mall. Scotland's defense has been tough, but they bring it out quickly. Across the middle of the pitch. It's lost forward and snatched in the air by Scotland. So there's a knock-on advantage, but they have the ball. They're going to clear it away. Taken back there by Gary Ringrose. Taken in the air on the other end. Is that Finn Russell? 
Does a dummy breaks through? 10 meter line actually picks up more space and kicking the ball away. Little chip over the top. Who's going to get it? Oh, it's taken by Ireland. Is that Kelleher? It was nicely done. So midfield, Ireland has the ball. 10 seconds on the yellow card. Ireland's going to kick over here. Whoa, nice job there by Kyle Rowe to make sure he didn't go into touch. He feeds it out on the wing. Cameron Redpath is out there now. It clears both benches. Rowe sends it back. Scotland yet to score a try. The yellow card's finally expired, but can't get a player on until we have a stoppage. Call to use it. Kicked over the top. Jack Dempsey now trying to make the tackle. Looked like a maul, but they said it was a tackle. James Lowe on the outside. That's a 50-22 if he pulls it off. Uh, it's going to go into the try zone. Going to be down there. Nope. Dummy down. So here it comes. You better run. Vosh Vendelfleer is going to catch him from behind. That was not a good decision. There's a high tackle, so they did get a penalty out of it. Five minutes remain. So best thing for Scotland is if this... Oh, man, nice job. George Horn breaks free. All right, come on. That's no advantage. Let's come back. Let's uh, kick the ball down the pitch. A lot of time wasted there. And Finn Russell grabbed around the neck. He's, he's down on the pitch. He got hit in the face or something. Simbin returned finally. You and Ashman. Jameson Gibbs Park is the man of the match. Vishal, how's it going, man? Good to see you there. Big smile on Gibson Park's face. Well deserved. He was all over the place today. So the clock is stopped at 75-32. Four and a half readers remain. Scotland yet score a try. Uh oh, we're gonna have a foul play here for that hit in the face. Could be yellow card coming on. Could be yellow card coming on um, Ireland here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Harry Byrne goes straight into Finn Russell. That's a card. Yeah, it's a card. Clear head on head. Right, Marius, we're ready. Mm. Just wait. We're just getting through the angles, please, Matt. Then we'll give this doesn't look good for Harry Byrne. So no, nah, that's a red card. The player up right, right. so it meets the, the yellow, the now. meets the yellow card threshold. Did we have 20, 22 green? 22 green. It is. We should indeed. go to the booth for a red 22. card. Harry Byrne is the man you're looking for. And yep, Harry Byrne going to go to the bin. 22. And it will can't be find him. Head on head contact meets the yellow card threshold. And it's going to the booth for a red card review. Agreed. That is correct. Uh, came at stream. Hey, um, Vishal, how you been doing, man? It's okay, man. Come when you can. You, you, it's nice of you to watch it all. We appreciate it. You're welcome. You are welcome here. So yellow card on Harry Byrne at 75-32. Yeah, that was a dangerous card. That's going to be upgraded to red, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's done. But the Six Nations is over, so Scotland line out. They've got it. Here they come. George Horn. Scotland needs to get a try here. They're up a player now. Over midfield. Tackle made. <clears throat> Kalen Doris falling all over the place. Interfering with the play. Finn Russell. Nice offload there. It's still Kyle Stenn in the game. Scotland now driving forward. They're inside the 10-meter line, but they got to score quickly here. Just three minutes left. Three minutes, 40 seconds. Still going forward is Gilchrist. Oh, there's a break. George Hart is on the loose inside the 22. We go back the other way. Finn Russell, they're going to go wide. Ewan Ashman gets through. But the clock is ticking. They need a quick score here, not this slow buildup. 
Crowd is going crazy here. Rory Sutherland with the carry now. George Horn to dig it out. Christie. Oh, he's flipped over. He gets tackled. Hugh Jones gets through. He gets through. He's going to get a try. Scotland are going to score. Under the post. Three minutes remain. Three minutes remain. It's still a ball game, but the Scotland have got to get up and down the pitch very quickly. Very quickly. Hugh Jones with a try for Scotland. Hugh Jones gets that one quickly. Conversion is up. It's 13, 17, 13 now. We have a new ball game. Oh my goodness, this building has suddenly gone quiet. Hugh Jones be fake the jock off of James Lowe, sitting down there picking up his jock strap. Voids three tackles. Josh Vanderfleer missed. Kalen Doris missed. And then, oh my goodness. 17 13 with two minutes remaining now. Scotland, they need a try here, not a penalty. My goodness. Pull the dice out and roll them, Scotland. Clock is stopped with two minutes and one second. Still a chance here. Still a chance here. Time is on now. Two minutes remain. Ball goes inside to 22, but Scotland's got to find something here. Don't just kick the ball away. They need a try. A penalty will not tie the game. Unconverted try. Christie. Oh, there's a line break. Oh, Scotland driving forward. Brilliant stuff. Finn Russell now. Does the dummy kick. They go wide. Scotland up to midfield nearly. Counter ruck coming from Ireland. Scotland hold on to it. Magically. Do one find him ever playing roll scrum. The ball goes backwards. It was a knock on. Oh, Scotland knocks it on. Just a minute, 15 seconds. By the time they get this back, the game will be over. Knock on will cost them the game. 17-13. But on the bright side, I'm going to get all my points in Super Brew. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Clock has stopped with one minute and seven seconds. So it's the bunker review. The yellow card will remain a yellow card because the degree of danger is not high, okay? Uh, looked to me to be high. So bunker review, it's a yellow card. Looked to me like it should have been a red card. Degree of danger is not hard. It's a head-on-head -head collision. Upright. Lucky, lucky outcome for Harry Byrne. That's a big break. Scotland has to win this scrum and get a penalty and kick it down the pitch. Crouch. Bind. Set. Got to be a good scrum. And Scotland hasn't been winning these scrums. Nope, they're not going to win it. Brought out of the back. Bundiaki with the ball. 30 seconds remain. Scotland screw the pooch here. Hugh Jones' try will be for nothing. They're just going to go through it here. Ryan Baird with a carry. Connor Murray digs it out. 13, 12 seconds. Crowd going wild. Nine seconds. They're just trying to go through phases here. Seven, six, five. Three seconds, two seconds. They're going to put it in touch here. Here it is. Ireland wins the Six Nations back to back. No bonus point, but 20 points on the log. Puts them at the top. No one can catch them. Ireland will get a point out of this because they finish within seven. Scotland. Wow. There'll be a lot of Guinness along the River Liffey tonight in Dublin as Ireland wins the back-to-back -back six nations here in convincing fashion here. Scotland 
The only thing was in this game was their defense. They had no offense until the end. Ireland are the champions of Six Nations back-to-back. -back. What a finish. Bundiaki walking around the pitch. Man of the match, Jamison Gibson Park. Well-deserved. Scotland, don't get it done. 17-13 is our final. Scotland finished with two wins and three losses. Underwater when they could have won this championship. Just 12 points on the log. Barely ahead of Italy. Wow. Ireland will finish with four wins from five, tri five games with 20 points and 84 point, point differential. So the game later this afternoon is academic between England and France. Just for ticket sales. Congratulations to Ireland. And congratulations to me for getting both green points on my Super Brew. Actually, it's a good day today. Italy, I picked by six. It won by three, so I get both points. Ireland, I picked by seven. They win by four. I get both points. And I've got New Orleans winning by five. They're winning by seven. So right now, I got points on all three of those six points. Wow. Congratulations to Ireland winning their back-to-back -back Six Nations. Great stuff there. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Really appreciate it. Let me see what this comment is here. Uh, strange. Ireland threw in at line out both feet and field of play. Clearly on TV, but I only saw it. Uh, I missed that. I missed that, Esbach. Uh, Chris Table point after this game, which team leader is Six Nation Tournament? Ireland wins it. It's not a leader. It's over, man. They win it this time. They win it. 20 points on log, 84 point plus differential. They got four bonus points, but that loss to England kept them from a grand slam, back to back grand slams. It would have been incredible. That would have been historic. But Ireland wins back to back Six Nations at least, and that's huge, huge for Irish fans. On St. Patrick's Day weekend, folks, what more could you ask for if you're from Ireland? Not really. Not really. Anyway, wow. Great stuff, folks. Great stuff. Anyway, all right, congratulations to Ireland who win this, and they deserved it. Boy, Scotland's defense was incredible. It was incredible. The tries they gave up weren't because they weren't trying. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. The tries they gave up were just unfortunate for them. All right, folks, that's it. We're going to wrap it up here. Thanks for being here. Next week, we'll have United Rugby Championship action right here on Rugby Ascended again. Thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely weekend. What's left of it? The sun's shining here in the East Coast of the United States. And we hit about 658 views on this. So not ideal, but not the end of the world. Thank you all for being here. Where is my game at? I lost it. There it is. All right. So that's going to wrap that up. And thanks. Be sure to hit the like button. Zoma, zoma in your head. In your head. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah. So Ireland wins the Six Nations. And um, Wales finishes with a big wooden spoon. They're winless. Shame for them. Three tries. Uh, Dan Sheehan got the first one when he stole the line out and dove over from a meter or two away. Uh, Porter got one after a yellow card when they did a tap and go from just inches away. And then Scotland got one from uh, Hugh Jones, an incredible try there. He beat three top Ireland players to score that try and left Ireland just befuddled. 17-13 is the final from Aviva Stadium in Dublin. Thanks for tuning in, folks. I've got to go. Cheers. Be safe out there. God bless and have a good rest of your weekend. All right. Wow, that was something else, wasn't it? All right. Where the heck is it? Oh, it's not here. All right, see you later, folks.